Two of the earliest pieces of labor legislation were the Railway Labor Act of 1926 and the Norris LaGuardia Act of 1935. Let's take a look at government regulation of labor unions. This legislation was followed by the passage of three acts, the Wagner Act of 1935, the Taft-Hartley Act of 1947, and the Landrum-Griffin Act of 1959. Jointly, these three acts are referred to as the National Labor Code. Prior to the 19th century, five laws had been enacted to handle rail labor disputes. Nonetheless, labor unrest in the railroad industry continued. Violent strikes and lockouts interrupted rail transportation of people and goods in the United States, adversely affecting the economy. The Railway Labor Act, or RLA, was passed in 1926 to try to provide a peaceful way for railroads and their employees to resolve their disputes. The RLA applies to common carrier, rail service, and commercial airline employees, the latter of whom were included in the act through provisions passed by Congress in 1936. Congress passed the Norris LaGuardia Act in 1932 to make it easier for employees to engage in union organizing activities. Before the passage of the act, employers had all the power when it came to how workers were treated. They could have federal courts issue injunctions in cases involving or resulting from labor disputes if employees wanted to strike or otherwise interfere with the flow of work. The act also outlined the process to be followed for hearings, granted workers the right to collective bargaining, and stated that neither officers of a union nor the union itself would be held liable for unlawful activities of its members that could not be proven to have be instigated or approved by the union. Congress subsequently passed the National Labor Relations Act, the NLRA, known as the Wagner Act in 1935. This act is often regarded as the most important piece of labor relations legislation. The act was passed for three main reasons. To protect the rights of employers and employees, to encourage these parties to engage in collective bargaining, and to control their activities so the economy wouldn't be adversely impacted. The Wagner Act established the National Labor Relations Board, known as the NLRB, to oversee compliance with the act. The NLRA protects private sector employees from employer and union misconduct, such as attempts by employers to prevent unions from organizing and attempts by unions to coerce employees into joining them. The NLRA also ensures that employees have the right to organize a union where none currently exists. The specific rights provided under the NLRA to employees include the following rights. To form or attempt to form a union at their workplace. To join a union even if it's not recognized by their employer. To assist in the union organizing effort. To engage in group activities, collective bargaining, such as attempting to modify their wages or working conditions. And finally, to refuse to do any or all of the above unless a clause requiring employees to join the union exists. The NLRA also provides rights to employees who are not part of a union. These employees have the right to engage in concerted activity. Concerted activity exists when two or more employees act together to try to improve their working conditions, or when a single employee approaches management after conferring with other employees on their behalf or is acting on the behalf of other employees.